ich das jetzt halt einfach mal so. Hello? Hello, can everyone hear me? Hey, there they are. I can't hear me on any headphones. That's super weird. I definitely hear you on those headphones. Okay, well, apparently it's just me being crazy. Um, would you like yours back? No, I'm fine. I can hear you now. I'm really sick. Okay, that, that's fair. That's fair. We won't. I guess the question is, can they hear me? Oh, yeah. Can you guys hear done? Russ says they can hear us. All right. Woo. Yeah, I know. We're so, um, kind. Very quietly. Always quietly. I'm so sorry. I just got to eat my croissant. This is about to be messy. Can you guys hear me now? And can you hear done? A wee. There we go. Woo. Okay. Yeah, we'll just move the mic because I don't mind sitting back a little bit. You're in my bubble. And? Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Ick, she says. Alrighty. So sorry, so let me just get that out of the way since I don't think I'm eating that right now. Okay. Woo. It's very dry here where we are right now, so you're going to hear us drinking drinks. You're going to have to get over it, I'm sorry. It's not really possible for us to talk an hour straight without drinking something right now. Cool, cool, cool. Also, they're festive drinks. It's pumpkin spice season, so get hype. Mine is not pumpkin spice festive. Oh, yes. This is low-key. I have been waiting for this background to drop because I have so many tokos to put on it. Cafe, like, oh my god. Okay. I think we're ready to go to kick off this uh, toko podcast for September 16th, 2023. Uh, remember, questions go in the Discord. I answer them anyway when I notice them in the stream chat, but uh, Dunn will track them in the Discord and we'll ensure your question gets answered. Okay. Apologies. Uh, both of us sound a little rough today. We admit it. It's just, as I said, dry here. And let's get rolling. So first things first, we're going to do a Toko Anthology update. Uh, we are officially into layout of all varieties right now. That means that we have hired a cover artist with... Have we put a pause down for that yet? Why are you asking me? You handled that part. I did handle that, and I don't think I did because we were clearing out something else first. But we've hired a cover artist. Um, Tina will be doing art for the cover for us. We, under we know what the concept is. She'll either get her down payment shortly or she'll get her payment as it is. And we'll have a big whole fun thing when we have the cover. I'm not expecting it this week. I'm not expecting it before the end of the month. It'll probably next month or November before we have a proper cover release. But we will do one and it'll be lots of fun. Additionally, Cray will be doing the layout for the exterior uh, of the book. She's totally agreed into that. We're good to go there. She's waiting on some cover whips before she can get moving. And then I will be beginning internal layouts for the books. Um, some housekeeping in that. As you all know, Toko's had a Twitter. And we've been talking about for years bringing it back to life. We have decided that in the way of Twitter, we're just going to X that out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said that. Um, so we're going to be dismantling our Twitter. Um, Toko's social media presence tends to live on Discord in general. I don't see us starting a TikTok or an Instagram for Toko specifically, because who has got time to run it? I don't, and, uh, you, you see me in Discord as it is. That being said, because of, you know, social media being what it is, and we're picking it up for various things all over the place, um, externally, we've decided that for Tina and Cray, if they want to post on like their Instas or their Discord private servers or whatever their whips, that's fine. Go for it. No problem. Um, I'm not going to be using my personal. I'm going to go ahead and use the Insta of the company quotes that's public. The imprint. Okay, it's called an imprint. Of the imprint that's publishing our physical books. That's my publishing company. So I'll be posting... Uh, the layout progress up there and I'll do updates on there as well and in Discord. 
Um, if you want that information, I, I'm sure Cray and Tina and myself will be more than happy to share you so you can go and follow and see those things. But we're not starting an official Toko's Insta or I would put them on there. So, all right. Cool, cool, cool. Housekeeping there. But we're officially in layout. We are gunning for November to be done. I will update you if that changes. So far, though, we have been very successful in this anthology. So it's looking green if we want to do a next one or do another one next year or the year after. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, I think that's all the housekeeping. Nobody gave me anything else that they wanted me to announce. I, I have an announcement for you. Yeah? When we're all through Gilead, I get 100 free raiders. No. That being said, questions about what I just said about anthology or the social stuff? Do, do, do. Yeah, I'm, I'm very doubtful there's going to be questions. It was very okay. short. Very minor. Update. Yeah. No, I think let's just type me. Let's get to the meat of this. Okay. Okay. Let's get to to the, the thing we're all here for. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Let's talk about Malta's. Okay. So that's, oh, but hold on. How do I, oh, hold on. Haha. -ha. Apparently I can do that. All right. My desktop. Oops. Take that down. Haha, -ha. that is a paper airplane. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, in all fairness, my three-year-old came up to me this morning with three sheets of paper and was like, Mama, make me a paper airplane. So what did I do like any proper engineer? I looked for instructions on how to make really good paper airplanes and then proceeded to spend 45 minutes constructing them for him only to be like you're not allowed to throw them and you'd be like what was the point i should have just folded it in half and called it good <laughs> but yes i paper open instructions this morning it's not like i had things to do <laughs> all right so welcome to moralta madness Ooh, done did the basic outline of the powerpoint and then left it alone to me to finish it you all have been warned this already <laughs> did you look through it this morning a few animations i didn't really read that closely oh this will be fun oh no this will be great fun for everybody okay first up moraltas they're tall yes this is our standard or sorry natural main moralta this is the official line out line art provided to us by tina it is gorgeous and everything that we wanted out of our original concept. Do you recall who had the original concepts we pulled from in the uh, the build? Let me go take a look. I do have them. We had a lot of Sighthound builds and then some named wolf builds. And we decided to put those two concepts together to make the Moralta that you see before you. I personally have been waiting on this one since the moment I said like two and a, two, two and a half years ago. That we were doing builds. All right, I've got four people that came together for this. Okay, who are they? We've got Seer. Okay. Ace. Ace. Avic. Avic. And Feather Bitcoin. Okay, so those were the four concepts that kind of came together to inform and build the Moralta. The Moralta, we've decided where it's going to fall in our breeding. This one is maintaining. We do think that there might be some minor changes going forward to our original compatibility chart. The Moralta should not be changing, though. Right? Okay. It's a different one. Well, it, well, the third one on their list is the one that we're considering. Oh, okay. So, Moraltas may breed with standards, which makes sense. We're all back towards standard is the middle of the thing, not dyers. So, Moraltas can breed with standards. That being said, they can also breed with dyers. They're adding another step to the upper side, so it's not just dyers and nakodas. Um, they'll be able to breed with Moraltas as well. And this is the... In the one that's in quest right now. Okay, so we are contemplating allowing them to breed with Sanakas, and Sanakas being the fox build that's coming in the future. We have the if you go to our ninth anniversary journal, you will see the. Um, Wasn't it the seventh? No, because in the ninth one, I dropped all of the standards. 
Oh, yeah. Go I dropped all the nap names for everybody. Or some of them might be short in half, but regardless. If you go look at our ninth anniversary journal in June, you will see the Sanaka. So we're contemplating allowing that. Doesn't matter for going forward right now. They're not going to be included in any of our calculations. That's just forewarning for everybody. Okay, items and traits. Let's run through this real quick. The build trait is going to be called Timid Toes. The abbreviation will be Tito. It's adorable. That's, that's why it won. We went through a lot of different names on this one. We went through so many. And then um, this was the temporary hold till someone came up with a better one. And as we were doing the build pass rates, we had to abbreviate it for the sake of our charts. And when we abbreviated it, it became Tito. And I was like, well, we're done now. Forget it. Uh, you, you're never going to change my mind. This is too cute. So Timotoes will be our build trait. That's like stout, stout heart, um, spicy soul, big boned, small stature. Yeah, that's all of them. No, and primal blood. So it's the equivalent. Ancient, ancient blood. Excuse me. Ancient blood. It's the equivalent to those for Moraltas. The consumable. This is the crafted consumable. It will be called the tall draught. Yes, it's in line with all the other ones. It's going to work the exact same. It's just for Moraltas instead of for any other build. The recipe for it will be released in open, October open. I don't know when you're dropping these. You keep changing your mind. I do keep changing my mind. It, it will drop when Moraltas drop. Art subs. They will be using close care. We'll get more on that in a moment. And we've decided that they're going to belong to Cleverness 2 because they are vastly different outlines than the current cleverness. Because uh, current cleverness is Toki, Toki and Dakino, and the Meralta is a very different outline, which will allow for more flexibility. As you recall, we, we, last time when Dakino and Hara joined us, and we were talking about why they got each thing, this is the same. We're looking to do vastly different outlines. We're taking a step away from realism, you know, at least like game level realism. And just trying to make it the most amount of flexibility in art because because we can. So we're going to. So this is the basics of the Moralta. Uh, and as I said, wait, what do you mean close care? We are announcing a small change in this as well. All subs will be grouped and applied to two builds with our current plan. That means... Uh, oh yes, and this will affect all replacements, traits, companions, totems. So anywhere it says close care or can be close care it'll work for both um right now panda is a coda and dire we're gonna split them here we go so we're gonna split panda from a coda and dire and we're introducing a new companion a kinkaju which will be applied to the other so if you see over here we have the furt sups close care chonk chews breeders box runners rations and then each build so Fert Sups will belong to Standards and Tokis. Close Care will go to Dire and Moraltas. Chonk Chews, Akotas, and Odonix. Breeder's Boxes, Dakino and Makata. And Runner's Ration will go to Tokara and Sanaka. So those will be it coming forward when the Makata, Sanaka, and Odonix drop. They will already be using those fertility subs. It's fair warning to everyone. Um, given that the companion, the panda, works on Akota and Dire right now, we will split that. One will get the Kinkachu, one will get the panda. And that's the plan there. Uh, we haven't made up our minds yet who's going to get what, but we did do some research into the system. There are only 11 panda companions in the system that are applied to tokos. Um, so I, at this point in time, head on over to our Discord, go into our podcast channel, or is it podcast raffle is the best place to put this? Or maybe podcast feedback. Podcast feedback. Go ahead and give us your vote and if you want Panda to stay on Dire or Akoda. And, or excuse me, if you want the Kinkachu for the Dire or the Akoda, whoever wins that vote, that's the decision that we'll make. And the others in the system, you'll get automatically updated. Because there's only 11, it's a very simple update for us. If the Kinkachu goes to the Akoda, I'll go in and any Akodas that have Pandas on them, I'll switch it to a Kinkachu as soon as this comes out. Until the Kinkachu comes out, though... You can continue using that panda. Um, I don't think we're going to do a um, grace period on this because we're going to switch everything out manually for you. Uh, 
we'll we'll deal with any situation that arises as it comes but as of right now we're not planning grace period also enjoy our adorable little kinkajou as done by moffat yes. moffat did our kinkajou and we do have variants on this as well they are a plus before you move on yeah in case some people are confused with the concept of grouping the build standard dakotas and tofus already share fruit subs and always have this is just making the new builds do the same thing that those two have already done yes they have if, if you go and look at Furt Sups right now, they've always had standards and Tokis on them. Um, we didn't give them separate because Tokis and standards had just been so intermixed throughout the entirety of Toko history, even though we eventually moved them away from mutation to their own build. Just the nature of the game evolved. We're just doing the same thing for everybody else. There, there's nothing special or crazy going on here. Um, and this means... We can double up on the totems. We can double up on all of this stuff. You don't need to have a separate totem for Dyers and Maraltas when they're sharing the rest of the fertility items. It just made sense. We could do it separately, but we're going to do it together. And if it turns out that that's not working and that's terrible, and a year down the line we decide to make five new fertility items for Tokis through Sanaka, we will. We'll adapt as this game changes. And we'll have the page updated, so this will be easy reference. Exactly. The page will be updated. All the items will be updated. It will be pretty easy references. That being said, questions specifically about items and traits as far as the Meralta goes. Do you got typing? Or am I just so amazing at explaining things? You haven't seen yet. <laughs> Everybody's catching up on feedback i think it looks like panda for a coda is in the lead right now panda for a coda it can be see that's what i logically thought they're the most bear shaped even though kinkajus are technically bearish <laughs> no and that makes sense technically right now there's 10 dyers with a panda and one a coda with a panda on it um and to me i got i got no horse in that race I'm perfectly happy either way, because even if I do have a dyer with a panda on it, it'll just get switched out to a kinkajou as soon as the kinkajou goes live. And they're both adorable. And they're both very adorable, so it's all preference. All right. I'm not really shocked there's not a lot of questions here. It, how many questions can you have about something that's a completely standard game mechanic across the board, <laughs> and we have done like four times over? I am going to petition that we cannot do Tito. <laughs> okay, give me a better name. Because it's too cute. <laughs> That's a terrible reason. <laughs> Maraltas are adorable. They are They are adorable. tall, leggy children. And I think they're really going to be shy, because maned wolves are shy, right? Yes, and looking at the species information, we are lacking a timid, shy breed. Yes. So we're thinking that Maraltas are going to be our shy guys. And just, you know, um, lost, hidden in the depths of Makarok. Away from eyes because they're just not very social. They're my spirit build. They are such your spirit build. <laughs> that that's our current running lore of where they're gonna come from. They've been in Makarok this entire time. They're just really, really deep in the jungle and they're kind of like did I hear a sound? Bolt. So these will be our, our very shy and timid build, ergo timid toes. That is where that came from. I probably should have said they're shy the same way we used to do they're sweet and they're spicy oh man that would have that would have really kept that pattern going yeah we go edit that slide later <laughs> yeah go for it no no one's gonna know the difference <laughs> all right no questions i take it no questions okay perfect perfect so next up stuff that we all really really care about slots litter sizes and compatibility and another spoiler. That's one, two, three in a row. This one, I guess, doesn't count only because you slipped it into Discord. I did slip it into Discord. I also I think you slipped it into Discord hours after Locke gave it to you. Hours? I think that's being generous. It was probably minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I did also get the Makata a bando at the same time. That better not be in this slideshow. I mean, this slideshow is about Moraltas, so it's all Moralta based. You. All of my spoilers. Wait, what? Are Meralta based? Oh. <laughs> I have not seen this. Yeah, this is the the royal, royal variant, royal happy. 
you know what? I already do this to me. Just like being a little puss. I know. Look at the tail. It's so cute it's and so curly. Long. Yes. So. That's right. We also have the variants for Moraltas. They're going out with everything ready to go. It's madness. <laughs> Tina is madness. Yeah, she was. All right. So, Moralta slots. As we've done for everything else, the Moralta slots, we're going to keep them matched. The final totals will be the same. They will be different at the average DOM and alpha. Uh, the extra slots will maintain the exact same pattern of plus one for 100 HP to a maximum of five. But once they reach alpha, they have the same number of slots. Going through um, all of our builds and also going through, like we did some research into like maned wolves, sight hounds, and how that worked, there wasn't really a, this one gender is the most dominant of dominant over the other. Um, kind of just more like normal wolves, where it's whoever's the smartest, strongest, fastest is kind of the little we got. So we decided that given we have so many other builds that are male forward, Moralta could be female forward. And when we say that, that we just mean that the girls have more slots up front than the boys do. That's all that means. So here... At average, boys are going to get six, girls are going to get eight. At dominant, boys will get six more for a total of 12. The girls will get six more for a total of 14. And then at alpha, boys are going to get seven more to bring them to 19. And girls will get five more to also bring them to 19. With your extra slot unlocks, that gets you to a maximum of 24 slots. We will not be releasing a slot increasing uh, trait right now. Not the, what is it, Exemplary Dire Bloodlines, um, Gentle Lakota. Um, um, Sweet Tempered Lineage, Hot Blooded Heritage. Yeah, they're not going to have that three letter one yet, but that's not weird. We didn't do it for Dakinos and Haras up front. And the reason being, we need to see how their slot numbers play out. Do they have too many? Do they not have enough? Because that trait allows us to... Uh, basically fix our own mistakes turns out that we like nailed it then maybe we'll do like two traits turns out we totally effed it and we're gonna do like five traits or five slots so that's why it's not going out it will come out six months to a year later the exact same way we did for the other ones it's working when we do it this way so we're gonna keep doing it but that's Moralta slots next up here is the new build compatibility chart this is already updated on topopedia we've added the Moralta along the side as well, and it stands with Moraltas can breed with standards. Why are Moraltas checked for Dakino instead of Dire? Hmm, that's a mistake. Apologies, everyone. I swore I got it right on the thing, but now I'm convinced I got it completely wrong, because you probably copy-pasted it right out of there. I didn't do this. This is your part of the thing. Did I do this? I definitely updated on Togopedia. If I did it, I was doing it at work on a quarter of my screen. Okay. And you probably, the D's, the D's got you. It's okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't panic about it. It's, it's fine. It's not a Togo podcast without a ridiculous thing of this nature, right? You just fix it. Okay, go fix it. And then I'll refresh and we'll just pretend it never happened. <laughs> Shit, I went too far. You went too far. Did you fix it? Yes, that should be correct now. And as you can see, the <laughs> standards, dyers, and Moraltas are checked, and that is exactly how it's always been, and we will not say otherwise. <laughs> okay, so um, our usual nice little compatibility chart. I love this thing. It's always good for you to see. I don't think we're ever going to get to a point where everything can breed with everything, but... Long to balance dyers for every build. Yes, it would. It would. It was an endeavor. We sat down to do the pass rates to this one and went, dyers. That's right. We can't just say the pass rate with dyers is X. We have to do the whole math. That's why Dakinos don't breed with dyers. <laughs> but we decided to sit and deal with it for um, Moraltas. And that's actually the main point of this podcast. The main point of this podcast is we have three 
uh, pass rates that came out of our conversations and we want your buy-in and your feedback on it and then we'll make a decision of which one it is from there or I would have dropped Moralta's like a week and a half ago. Something wrong? I just realized that the colors on the headers are off by one. Shh, it's fine. Nobody even noticed. I noticed. <sighs> yeah, I know you did. All right. So that's our new compatibility chart. That is already updated on Tokopedia. So litter sizes. Here's what we're going to do. Of course, we said Moralta's use cl close care. Creates companions that replace co close care work on Moralta's. And Moralta's do not have any breeding companion or consumable restrictions upon release. Other ones that did, it's only because we had to for something else we were fixing at the time. Um, such as when the Akotas came out until we finally <laughs> got all of that in place. So, Moralta x Moralta, they use these small litter sizes. You will see these. We have small, medium, and large. We stick to those. Nobody has anything special outside of those. It's just small, medium, large. So, Moralta and Moralta have the small, uh, which means the base is 1 to 2. The, the Dom being sire is 2 to 2. The Dame being sire is 2 to 3. And with sups, that maximum is going to go up to 4. So, that's our small litter size. I'll move us along pretty quickly here. Uh, when crossbreeding with standards or dyers, they get the medium litter size, so the slightly increased. Oop, no, go back, 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 back. Oop. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, my bad. I thought there was one more thing. <laughs> okay, it's all good. So uh, they get the medium, which is the one to three, two to three, two to four, and then the maximum of five with the sups. Anywhere the word sups, you see it. That just means whatever their fertility item is. We just use sups for shorthand, but that means close care in this situation. Okay? Cool. That is litter si slot totals, litter sizes, and compatibility. Which then brings me to questions and another spoiler. Did you put one of these on every question slide? <laughs> Not just the question slides. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's going to be no... Ugh. It'll be fine. If the slide is green, it's got a spoiler on it. And if it's not green, it might still have a spoiler on it. That's what you're telling me is like every slide could have a spoiler on it. Yeah. I'm never letting you do these by yourself again. Yeah, I know. You were like, here, I put the charts together for you, but I need you to go and do all the in-between slides and get it in the order that you want it. And I was like, no problem. I will happily take over that burden and get this in shape. <laughs> okay, so I don't see anything typing in questions, but I have unofficial questions from Twitch. I'll take them. So if we agree, we get them now, right? I mean, you probably don't get them today, but only because I have plans this afternoon to sit and do a bunch of layout work that I'm behind on. Um, but Happy Tuesday. I have a plan, okay? But I just can't tell y'all until I know what the, the decision is here. It's going to be glorious. I don't, I don't know about this. My favorite holiday is approaching. All right, if there's no questions, I'm going to move on. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. Um, oh. When do they drop? What is your favorite holiday? What? What? Didn't Pirate Day already pass? Pirate Day is not my favorite holiday. Is it Halloween? How do you not know Halloween is my favorite holiday? My my bookcase is covered in bats. But that's so far away. I have a Halloween decoration that hangs on my door year round. <laughs> yeah, you don't get into the spooky season pumpkin spice. Well, no, peppermint's the superior. Mm. I'll give you Christmas has got wonderful peppermint. I love every piece of it. Pumpkin spice is meh. It's just, it's overdone. If it was just coffee, it would be fine. But it's everything. And then, okay. Pumpkin spice donuts are delightful. So it's pumpkin spice loaves and pumpkin spice muffins and pumpkin spice chai and pumpkin spice cookies. Y'all want some tea? I'm going to give you some tea. Pumpkin spice tea is pretty good, too. So at this point of the year, every single year I have known this woman. She buys everything, literally everything that is pumpkin spice. I mean pumpkin spice butter. I mean pumpkin spice hot chocolate, pumpkin spice mochi. mochi. She literally buys 
anything that says pumpkin spice on it. I'm like, you are the reason there are all these pumpkin spice things that people don't want to eat. However, it starts in September and she buys it through November. And then May, June of the following year, I throw it all out because she didn't eat it. But if I eat it, how will I enjoy it when I want it later? Every single year. When it comes to our Easter candy and Christmas candy um, and Halloween candy, I just stopped asking. I just started eating it. Because if I wait for her to open it, I will just throw it out in six months. Because what it? What if she wants it more next week? Yeah, that's the tea. <laughs> you okay there? Twitch chat's just delightful. You'll get to read it later. Oh, oh yeah, I can't see the Twitch because I'm doing a PowerPoint. Oh, my God. I mean, really, it's just my gamer instincts bleeding over into real life. I picked up a potion at the start of Pokemon. I should never use this because what if I need it for the Elite Four? That does sound like you. <laughs> I started playing a spell jammer game, and in my spell jammer game, I have a whole bag of things already, and I'm like, do not hoard the things. Just use them. We have no healer. Use all the things. Okay. Everybody's just agreeing with me, just so you know. <laughs> I feel like that's not going to be true when I get over there later. <laughs> okay, uh, so. Option one of uh, base pass rates. These are all just quirky little titles that we gave them. So in this one, it's standard rules. It's a thing where it means two things at once. It was pretty fun. All right. So Moralta and Standards. In this situation, a Moralta Standard breeding is going to bring you 30% chance of Moraltas, 70% chance at Standards. With Tito 2 and Taldra, you can bring that up to a 45% chance. I'm going to leave it up for just a second so that everyone can read it, take it to mind. Also, keep in mind, we will share this PowerPoint as we have done in the past. You'll be able to get your hands on it, so don't panic if you don't remember the numbers. And as soon as we know what the final numbers numbers are, we'll put them up on Tokopedia right away. Moralta x Moralta. In this situation, you're going to get a 40-60 split. Tito 2 and Tall Drop bringing you up to a 55% chance. So you get over the 50% mark. These are a little behind our other breeds. We know that. Moraltas are slightly rarer than our other breeds. We have a couple reasons behind where we're feeling on that. This technically falls in line with how we do things with all the other builds. Standard, or sorry, emerald words. A Dakino Dakino gets you the best shot at a Dakino. A Dakino Standard gets you the second best shot. And then crossbreeding outside of that gets you just a little less. These ones are a little closer in numbers than other ones, other breeds are. So Moralta Moralta is still your best bet at a Moralta. Moralta standard is not, is slightly less, but remember it'll have a bigger litter size. So Moralta Moralta is small, standard Moralta is medium, and we're looking at these numbers. These are smaller than Dakino and Hara, I believe. So we are looking to make them slightly rarer, not significantly rarer. If we dis we go with this option and a year down the way we go, ooh, those numbers are too small. Moraltas are not moving into the economy at a reasonable rate. Even six months down the line, if we make that decision, them being what they are makes it easy to bring them up. It's very hard to bring them back down. You all recall the grand rebounds of 2021 or was that 2022? 2022 was mains, wasn't it? 2021 was Y'all remember 2021. There is still one or two of you out there with a pitchfork. I know because you tell me about it every now and then. The majority of us are all good. Spoiler alert, it's me with a pitchfork. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Moving on to option one, standard rules, Moralta Dyers. So with these in mind, we have decided to maintain something similar to how the Akoda goes, where the less dire blood, the more likely to get another uh, breed out, build out of it. So Moralta, 10% would get you a 35% chance at a medium build. There are so many 10% running around out there, and they'd be good for this. Uh, 
Meralta 25s are a 25-25% chance that Meralta are dire. The Meralta 50s are 15 each, and the Meralta 75s are 5% each. That means your grand stack 75% dyers are terrible for breeding Meraltas. Absolutely terrible. Is this on purpose? 100% on purpose. It's, it is designed to add a level of challenge to moving things between the different builds and the different races. To, you know, we'll get there eventually, but it, it is designed to gate slowly into bringing these new things in. Additionally, oh, I didn't even say anything about the Moral to 100 because it's no chance. You get a standard. If you take your awesome Moralta and breed it with Fenrir, you're getting standards. I would really suggest not wasting that, that slot. And additionally, Dire Pups will always be 1% lower. So you'll notice here on Moralta 10%, uh, the dire box is empty because you can't breed a dire out of it. There's no step below that. It just goes standard. On the Meralta 25, the dire percentage on the pups would be 10%, and so on up the chain. Okay? Uh, we also did so that you could see this one with full Tito 2 and Tall Draught in mind. So with all of the Meralta bonuses, we don't have a version of this that's got the Meralta and the dire stuff on it. We just did the Meralta because that's kind of like the big question right now everyone cares about. What? I, I think the stable might be wrong. Did I math it wrong? I think you just added the 15 and took the 15 off standard when it's supposed to be split between taking out a dire and standard. Did I? Yeah, so we're supposed to take 7.5 off of each of them. Can you go check the, the sheet? <laughs> no, you did copy the sheet and the math would have done that. I thought I copied the sheet, but... That doesn't mean much. Anyway, carry on while I go check the sheet. Okay, Dunn's going to go check the sheet. The Meralta number is correct here, which is what we'll mostly look at. So if you do the Tito and Tall Draught, that's grand total of about 15%. Um, so uh, Meralta 10%, you would get yourself up to a 50-50 shot at a Meralta. The... Uh, Meralta 25 is at the 40, and then 30, 20. But we are maintaining that a Meralta 10%, even with all of this, would get you no no dire and no Meralta. So, yes, we're not encouraging that breeding. This is the one that sits most in line with how all of our numbers work in all of the other builds. There's no shenanigans going on here, per se. Uh, we're using our... Same breeds are small litters. Crossbreeding is a medium litter. There's a f Dakotas are the specials who get the large litter, I believe. But um, otherwise, you know, these fall in line with how our other crossbreeding and in-species breeding works. And these fall in line with how Akota numbers work, at least a, that the ascending and descending, how much shot you have at a dire sort of part of this goes. So, all right, did you... Yeah, um, your numbers are fine because you copied them from my formula and I messed up. Okay, so the dire percentage would be lower. I'd have to verify, we'd have to have secret to check the code, but I'm pretty sure that's how that would go. Yes, so um, Tito and Taldrot, they split from everything else. They pull that uh, apart, so technically the dire number is 7.5, too big right here. Um... Why is that correct? Because then that would make 75% nothing. I... Okay, we're going to have to go double check that. Yeah, because you didn't update those formulas. No, I took them straight off our dire tables. And that's how they looked on our dire tables. Yeah. I think this might be accurate. You might be considering what happens when you put... Both of them the together. both of them together because when you put both of them together they each lose um they, they share and they each get 7.5 they each get 7.5 that's what you're thinking about my that's friend that's what i'm thinking about okay Ignore sorry me. everybody no that's i'm so sorry breeding numbers are complicated <laughs> they're really complicated to understand no if you did um tito 2 and big bone 2 and tall draught and dire rem together then they would be sharing the the fifteen percent. You don't get more than fifteen percent. They share the fifteen percent. That's how that's supposed to work. So that's the confusion that's going on here. That's don't worry about it. These numbers are accurate. And of course, the dire percentage step will be one lower. 
All right, so. Hmm. No, I meant to have a question slide there. Questions. We'll go on to option two in a minute. Questions, concerns, go ahead and bring them up. Remember, this is 100% wanting your feedback on all three of these. This is the one that's most traditionally in line with what we're, we normally do or what we did in our rebalance. It's probably the one that has my stamp of approval, if I'm honest. I think option one is actually the option I would go with if the group doesn't wildly swing, wildly is a wrong word, doesn't swing towards one of the other options. Questions? Don't see anybody typing. Make sure you guys are in podcast questions because while I try to keep up with Twitch chat, I do miss things. Am I just absolute perfection today? I mean, this is this this is a math this is a math PowerPoint. This is always how they go. That's true. That's true. Okay, well, I can move on then. Onward you go, I suppose. Yeah, there's nobody typing. Okay, I'm just gonna take it as I'm amazing and move on. I think that's the best thing for my ego. I guess uh, I can tell you that everybody's excited about the lower level die that's getting rolled. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. I hate when I can't see the Twitch chat go by and see what the vibe is of everybody, but PowerPoints be like that. Okay, so base pass rates two is we love dyers. This means it's a dire forward. Dyers Moralta breedings are going to get preferential treatment versus Moralta Moralta breedings getting preferential treatment. So, oh, I missed one of those standards. Ah. I had this thing where I was like, I don't want to call them standards anymore. I want us to call them Dakotas. I know everything's a Dakota, but I want them to be called Dakotas, like the standard build being that for the sake of it. But that requires a significant amount of renaming and rework through our system. So we were not there. So I got halfway through renaming everything on this PowerPoint and went, that's a terrible idea right now. Let me go fix all of that. But clearly I missed one. All right. So. Moralta standards. This is going to look very similar. This is the 30-70 split, the 45-55, normal litter size, as you would expect. Doesn't look that different than when we saw on the other one, which is fine. I'll scoot on over to the Moralta Moralta. But here on the Moralta Moralta, it's 30%, meaning it now matches two standards. So Moralta Moralta and Moralta standard are uh, the same. The difference being they have different litter sizes. One is medium, one is small. Wow, my brain today, right? Need more coffee, clearly. Clearly I need more coffee. It's been a week, everybody. It's been such a week. I had to be on a hour and a half meeting with an intelligent human being. And she was intelligent and explained to her that the other people were not intelligent human beings. And it was, it was rough. I walked out of that and went, here is 43 objects that should never have been created. She's like, how did they get created then? What happened? And I was like, you tell me. Your agents manually did them when the automation went, I shouldn't create this project. And she's like, oh, oh. And I was like, yep. So she's cleaning that mess up. And then the following morning, I was like, all right, you want me to fix these 80? We only need you to fix 20. You want me to fix these 80 so you don't have 60 duplicates? Yeah, can you fix those 80? That's kind of been my week. That's been my week. Sorry, everybody. I know I'm a little brain dead right now. We will find the hype. <laughs> okay, actually, we need hype. So here's what we're going to do to get some hype. We're going to have two raffles because I fucking, I effing feel like it. Ooh, whoa. Yeah. We need hype. All right, um, let's go to Discord raffle right now. And I am going to raffle off, does, does Mori have any slots left? Probably. Okay, I'm going to raffle off a slot to Mori, my quad UT. Um, but in response, what I want you to put in a raffle chat is a moment where, literally like what I just explained, where you were talking to another human and you had a... WTF moment because of what they just said. <laughs> don't be don't be more than PG-13 though. Okay? <laughs> Go. This is not Can I tell them? Can I tell them the story of the guy who I don't dislike from Con? 
Probably not. Oh, you're right. I can't. Yeah. You can all ask me about it in secret later. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Don't broadcast it when we have news about that con. <laughs> yeah, okay. The dude was fine. There was nothing wrong with it. He just opened his mouth and I had a WTF moment. <laughs> okay. How long do they have on this? Uh, until I finish this option. Okay. All right. So that's Moralta Moralta. Both one is small, one is medium, 30%, 70%, and then the Tito Tall Draught matches. Which moves us on to where this is dire forward. So here, the morale to 10% would actually be a 40% chance. So with dyers, your 10% Moralta is actually a higher chance than with standards or with Moralta Moralta. This is designed to kind of like put a lot of love into the lower end of dyers. I don't know if that's the direction we want to go. It's not a bad direction if we go it. It just breaks our standards of uh, same things together as your best chance of the thing. Which we've done for mains and builds going forward. So this is counting down by 10 again. So it's 10, 30, 20, 10. Up to that zero chance with a 100%. And again, the dire percentage gets matched up to that. So it's the 30, 20, 10. Um... And then, of course, the remainder are going to standards. As with option one, it's the one step down as well. So 25% would breed you a 10%. But remember, that 10% is then really breedable with the Morelta. So pretty good. Uh, that's how this sets up. I'm going to leave it up for just a second while I take a drink so that you all can look at the numbers and bring them into your brain. The difference here between this and the last one is about 10% of a difference, I think. Give me a second. I have to actually How make sure. How is that supposed to go into their brain, these moves? Well, hold on. I have to actually make sure that what I just told them wasn't insane. No, it's 5%. It's a 5% difference. Okay. I'm putting it back. It's a 5% difference with option one. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Okay. Everyone's looked at it, and then here is the Tito 2 Tall Drought version of it. Holy crap, it didn't update the numbers. Pass, pass, pass. They're there. Add 15 to all those top numbers. <laughs> Should you want I... me to go do that? Yeah, you want to go uh, add 15 to all those numbers? Oh my gosh. What in the world is I going we on? I prepared for this. That's why I didn't give you a hard time. I was like, okay, yeah, you, you announced it last week. We started this earlier in the week. It'll be fine. That is an incorrect way to think about any podcast. The job is that I am supposed to be spontaneous and wild and let's just do all the things. And you are supposed to be stoic and, you know, triple checking all of the ridiculousness that I just did distracted with work this week that's fair you were 75 25%. is that correct 55 45 yes that seems like such a sharp drop off on yeah the dire gets introduced that actually puts a lot of focus on 25 versus 10 in my opinion then. well if you're going for a build out okay hold on hold on let me, let me pop this back up, and then you can understand what we're talking about. Hey, look! The correct numbers! Is that, like, number four of F-ups right now? I don't know, man. Oh, I, there's going to be a counter. Someone's going to come back and tell me how many times I made a mistake on this podcast. It's going to be terrible. Whew. So, yes, there is a lot of focus on 25% if you just want to not standard build. If you're going for Meralta, the 10 is still your best bet. But if you're going for, I just don't want a standard, then the 25 is actually your best bet because it drops your standard chance all the way down to 25%. And again, one step lower. So on the 25, it's 45% chance at Meralta, 30% chance at a 10% Dyer, and 25% chance at a standard Dakota. Okay, let them read that. Questions. Or should I end my raffle? Are people still typing in that raffle? People are still typing, so do questions, questions first. I'm going to be ending the raffle soon, guys. Hurry up. Man, I really should have just... I didn't control freak it this week, and look what has happened. In all fairness, 
I have project managers and product owners for a reason. And right now, the manager of the product owners is very scared because he's given me a newbie product owner this week. And he's like, I know that you won't leave her behind and you will make sure she learns everything that she needs to learn. It's like, but you also need to let her do the thing and to be in charge to some degree. And I was like, oh, I'm fine with that. But then she's not very like take charge. She's a little bit like, no, I feel like you should explain this because it's a technical aspect and I would like to learn it. I'm like, oh, okay. We had a whole conversation where she's like, you just explain things really user friendly. And I'm like, I do. I don't feel like I do. Yet here I am explaining all this math stuff to people as user friendly as possible. Hmm. All right. No questions so far. You guys are. It's numbers. It's always numbers. Like I know. I at know. At the end, we'll get questions. Okay. And there will be a spot for like all and any questions at the end. And I also have something super awesome to tell you at the end. Okay. What are you going to do? Are you ending that raffle? Oh, there's still people typing. Hurry, hurry, guys. Yeah, seriously. Um, Let me fill space with time so that you have time. Fill space with time? Yeah. Are you a doctor now? <laughs> I have a screwdriver. You do, actually. Sam did do that for you. It's a wonderful screwdriver. Did we ever put it up? Yeah, it's up. Okay, my screwdriver finally went up. I have forced it into so many recipes. I have admittedly always been extremely jealous of the hammer and the license plate, the license plate and um, all of the other crafting tools that had like people's names on them. I can't explain it. I was just like the, the license plate went out and I felt super jealous, even though it had been my idea. <laughs> and I had I'd been like, we're putting this Lewis name on it. I was super jealous. <laughs> And then finally, Spam made me a screwdriver and was like, sweet, I finally get one. It's mine. And then they voted to use the one that didn't have the rose on it. And I was like, oh, oh. But then no recipes ever came up, so it never got put out. And I was like, oh. So it's not even like that. And then Dunn forced it into existence a couple months ago. And I think she put the rose one out. I did. Yeah. Because I've been super jealous of the hammer and the license plate for like three years. It's ridiculously childish, I know. We also have craisins now. We have craisins now, too. Like, I don't fault anyone wanting one. I also wanted one, but then I sat in that spot of going, but you have too much power. You can't just make it happen. That's not fair. Other people can't do that. <laughs> okay, I think everyone has finished typing. All I'm right, a close that raffle quickly. Okay. Raffle closed, and then... Craisins are the best prey. <laughs> Actually, no. Yuckies are the best candy of Topolini. Uh, incorrect. <laughs> when do I get my yucky background? You never do. What if I get 100,000 yuckies? I don't know why you think that would motivate me to make a yucky background. Are you going to spend those 100,000 yuckies to make the background? I will go hit up Spam and be like, hey, Spam, you remember yuckies? <laughs> Spam would probably do it. <laughs> okay, I have to count this. You go do what you're doing. Okay, so um, while Dunn counts that, I'm going to move on to what I suspect will be a slightly less popular option. So this option was brought to us um, by someone who was really thinking about the dire market. So this one I've named as all's rare that ends rare because it keeps things extremely rare and that's that means on the dire market and on the Meralta market so before we go in here and anyone's like but these numbers are terrible jill like calm down someone put a lot of thought and effort into this it's all good we are voting so if you don't like it don't vote for it that's as simple as it is here you're totally allowed to say i don't really like this distribution because i don't like how small the numbers are that's fine don't scream it cool 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 but this one is designed in mind to keep the impact on the dire market, which is, you know, in a state of flux right now. It's changing from what it has been before. Um, this is to do the least amount of impact on that, more so than the other two options were. So, first things first, there would be a change to litter size. Moralta standards 
would actually go to a small litter size. The reason that's on here versus anywhere else is this is a break in our standard way of doing things. Crossbreeding is usually medium minimum, but this case it would be small, and the Meralta chance would only be a 20 to 80% for standards. I missed another Dakota. Um, and with the Tito 2 and Tall Drought, it would only go up to a 35. So that would mean standard Meralta, it would keep the Meraltas extremely rare. There's benefits to that economy wise because it means that each of them will retain their value longer. But yeah, it does mean that you're less likely to get one in a breeding. These numbers off the bat basically say one in five. And you don't get five pups in that litter. I mean, if you lavender and I think this is going to, Akoda was winning panda. So you need a lavender and kinkajou and all of that to get to it. So that would be Moralto standard. That would break the, well, standards by being a small litter size. The Moralto Moralto would sit at the 40. So that would mean the inbreeding would still be very powerful. Um, so it's the 40, 60, and then 20, 20. So it keeps the Meralta the same power. Pop on over to the Dyer. So this is where it's way more drastically different. If you breed a Meralta in a 10%, you only have a 30% chance at a Meralta. That's lower than the other ones as well. It's down a bit. And then it steps down and it's not at an inter or a set step like the other ones were. It's a little more finessed. So the 25, you lose 10%, and then it's five more each step down. This one does allow Meralta 100% breedings to come up with, um, with dyers. Uh, but keep in mind, there's a little asterisk there at the bottom, pups are two steps down. So a Meralta 50% would result in 15% chance at getting a Meralta, a 50% chance at getting a dyer, but the dyer would be a 10% dyer. So basically what this means is Meraltas would be incapable of breeding 75% dyers. And if you wanted a 50% dyer out of it, you'd need to breed it with Fenrir or Artemis. Artemis is the other one. Yeah, Fenrir has no slots. Yeah. I hear the pitter-patter of little feet in the middle. Okay. Guns popping off for a second to go and corral the pitter-patter of small feet. It's nap time, but he doesn't like to nap anymore. All right, so this one is a little more, I don't want to use a charged word in any capacity. This one is just a little more extreme than the others. And I don't mean that extremely good. I don't mean that extremely bad. It is just more extreme numbers than the other ones that we have. It would, to a degree, do what was suggested. It would keep Meraltas from affecting the dire market in most ways because they wouldn't be very useful for doing any sort of breed up. Um, they wouldn't even be useful for doing any sort of breed down. But the 10% Meralta, 10% dire Meralta would still maintain a 30% pass rate, which would be better than standards. All right. And then. Uh, Obviously, I have my Tito 2 and Tall Draught as well. So in this one, you'll notice when you hit that morale to 50%, you do drop to only like a 20% chance of getting a standard. But the dire you're going to get out of this is still going to be only a 10%. Um, and the numbers are going to look as you expect. So with Tito 2 and Tall Draught, in this, which one, all's, rule, all's rare that ends rare option, um, the morale to 10% is a 45% chance. So you get really close to that 50-50. Uh, and these would maintain the medium litter size. All the dire breedings would maintain that. He had to go potty. Oh, did he? Yeah, give him another 20 minutes. yeah, go ahead. Do you know how to? Not really. So you go to the top right corner. You know, you do the slide down where you see all that. Mm -hmm. One of them kind of looks like a counting stopwatch. If you click on it, just... You should just have to hit start again because the, the, it should say turn off. <laughs> yes, if you didn't know this, on an iPad, you can set a timer that turns the iPad off. It's extremely useful for children. So you go and set a timer for whatever timer you'd want, but instead of playing a sound, you say turns off, and then it turns it off. And this way you can give a toddler 30 minutes of iPad, and then it magically turns off, and it's not your fault. 
glorious. All right. So <clears throat> back to this. So this is the Moralta Dyer Tito II Tall Draught for all's rare that ends rare. So the first one we were calling Standard Rules because it it is standard forward. You're going to get really good shot there. It's going to have our standard rules of Moralta Moralta being, you know, your best bet. It falls in line with all of the other rules that we have. The second one is we love dyers because your dyers are actually your best bet at getting anything. And then this one, all of the numbers are down. It means that Moraltas are going to come out of the gate very rare, very um, probably going to be expensive for a bit in the economy. That doesn't mean you aren't going to get one for art. I will probably sell them for art if I get some. Other people will as well. It just means that they're going to stay rare longer than normal. And we are saying that we do believe these will be a little rarer than Dakinos and Horus out off the bat. This is just a more extreme version of that versus option one or option two. And then I think now I am taking questions. Also enjoy your Barbary Bay. Dunn is still, still gone. Um, there's so many things she wouldn't want me to do. I feel like she's up to shenanigans over here because I'm seeing the word mischief written on her screen. I'm getting to look at her screen and just be like, why is the word mischief on this screen? Something's up here. Um, and then let me see. Now is the moment for questions. If you guys have no questions, I'm going to be so confused. Or is this just one of those situations of this is our fourth PowerPoint? So at this point, you know how these PowerPoints go. You understand how the professor is going to lecture at you. You're down for it. You know you're going to get the slides later, so you don't need to ask me about it. Or I was at least able to anticipate you were going to ask me, so I told you in advance. And you're all like, yeah, no, what? It's fine. Hey. What did you do? Nothing. Nothing at all. Mm -hmm. Do you like Barbary Mains? Jill. <laughs> Tail. I haven't seen the tail. The dom tail? Oh my god, it's so fluffy. I'm gonna die. Yeah, the Moraltas have some of the best tails, in my opinion. Okay. Are we on questions right now? Um, do you have the results of the, the first raffle? Yes. Okay, I see that you were up to mischief. Naturally I was. So, that's your winner, that's my winner. Alright, so it turns out we have two winners. So, the winner of Mori, uh, Mori being Moriarty, my four UT dakota is hottie moon chaser congratulations you'll see a slot it's going to drop for you soon i hope that you put your your da name on there somewhere so that we are we're pulling it to the right person and then the second winner will be going to mischief remind me who mischief is my quad and mischief is dunn's quad i think is related to mori yeah it's one of the mori kids yeah there's a lot of mori kids out there he's he's a bane in the ut <laughs> the ut bloodlines and that will be going to Animal Art Kingdom. That's from the hype raffle. Because we needed some hype up in here. Slash WTF moments. I will go and read them all. Don't think I won't. I'll probably comment. <laughs> okay. All right. Everybody's slots should be out now. Perfect. All right. Questions. How will the voting go? Will it be in a non-Google sheet? Um, I'm honestly going to run it in Discord. I'm, I'm Can gonna... you see if we have a poll function with Dino? We can see if we've got a poll function. If we've got a poll function on Dino, I will happily use a poll. Otherwise, I will set up a feedback channel for you to go and put your information in there. And the reason we're going to run it in Discord is y'all were here. You heard my explanation. You know that I'm leaning to option one, but I'm not upset by option two. Option three is going to ensure rarity and longevity of that rarity better than the other ones, but it does mean it's going to be harder to breed for. All of them have pros and cons. I'm more than happy to go through pros and cons of all of them for us, if that's something that we want. Um, but you were here. You got the information. You saw it. And people who come by later and listen to it, they're all going to come by the Discord to find most of that. So I'm going to keep it in the Discord because you're the people with the information who have now been brought up to speed. And we're going to leave it up for a couple days to a week probably and make our decision from there. I suspect I know what's going to win, but I could be wrong. Have been before. Usually happy to be. How's that poll functionality? It looks like it does exist. I'm going to go play with it in the background before I kick that off so we can we'll have an answer by the end of the podcast. Okay. I have a question. Can we see the Sphinx main too? No, Jill. No, you can't. Uh, you totally can. Hold on. Wait. 
Did you put it in here? I did not. That means nothing. Which means Joe. nothing. Damn it, Joe. What was the paper airplane joke there? Nope, that's my email. That is not what it's supposed to be. Uh, let's see. Sphinx Man, you said? Ta-da! Do you know when we get builds done, the first thing we have made is actually the uh, Sphinx Wayne, and then everything is built on top of that. So whenever we got, um, I got all of the, the Nat and the Sphinx done for all of the future builds, because the that ensures that the neck's in the same place on all of the future ones. Because when we did Horrors the first time, we had a moving neckline, um, and it was a whole crazy thing, and we had to <laughs> redo some stuff. What? Cray, stone cold. Wow, it's almost like having this many tabs is difficult to navigate. It's not difficult to navigate. What are you talking about? <laughs> For that, they're all getting another main. No. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. What do I got here? Um. You are... <sighs> oh, it's too late. The smart ones, it's already too late. Mm, let's go with long main. They're my favorites. <laughs> Look at it. Look how amazing it is. And I have seen the gala of this. I need so many gala maned Moraltas. It might be my literal new favorite. And it's going to be real. Like, I think they've usurped dyers for me. I am so excited. Dunn's giving me a lot of dirty looks right now. Uh, any other questions? While I go try and handle this pole thing. <laughs> script? Script, whatever. Okay. Dunn did not write me a script. Dunn really left this to me this time. You're seeing all of the effect of it. My script was three bullet points and then a PowerPoint. That you saw how well I did that. So, any other questions? None that I see. Okay. Okay. So, I have one more thing on the PowerPoint, which is our first glance at our first Meralta UT. Yeah, look at that gorgeous creature, that absolutely gorgeous creature. So this will be our first Meralta UT. It will not, I don't think it will be dropping right away. I suspect it'll come with our first UT release. Uh, let me see. It's September right now. We don't usually do um, new releases of UTs in October, November. They usually wait for January. But given what it is, it might go when Maraltas go. This is going to be the HP booster. Um, every, every single build has an HP booster. Eventually, you won't be able to build a toko that has all of them on there but this is uh going to be right now the name is tentatively perceptive partner and this will be the plus two hp for moraltas that are drawn with it but this will be the starter of it as well it is a glorious i, I it looks like a zebra i guess <laughs> i learned a weird name for zebras which was prison horses and i was what? like whoa that's interesting was that on your filter list for work uh, no, it wasn't on my filter list for work. That's a whole other story. Um, but I was going through a website that I go through that I enjoy, um, about customer stories. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of them was a tour guide in South Africa and people came and he doesn't make fun of anyone's English or anything like that. Cause he deals with people from all over the world all the time. And somebody from, I believe it was somewhere in Asia. He didn't know. So he didn't guess in the story. But they were asking if they were going to see the prison horses. And it took him a minute to figure out they meant zebras. <laughs> and he's like, and from now on, they're prison horses. And I was like, yeah, I can see how that would happen. So I looked at this and I was like, oh, it's a prison horse. Wait, nope, that's a Dakota. <laughs> Terrible. I know I am. And yes, this is a rough mane that Daft designed for us. Yes, yes it is. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to open it to all and any questions about, 
I am about to. I'm going to open it to all and any other questions about Maraltas. And then I'm going to kick off our totally normal <laughs> raffle that we do. Uh, let's see. What are we going to do here? What are we going to do? I don't want to ask you guys what your... Um, I don't want to ask you what your base pass rate is because I want to give you time to think about it and not, like, gut reaction. Especially because apparently uh, Twitch was having some pixelized issues for people working on mobile, so... Oh. We'll get, we'll get a PDF out as soon as we're done. Yeah, we'll get a PDF out for you soon. Also, this is what the poll would look like for... So it would be a React poll, but it's run this way. No, React poll's fine. Okay. Everyone knows how a React poll works at this point if you've been on Discord. And people will explain it if you don't. So... Oh, I need a raffle question. Um, how tall do you think the Maraltas should be? Their actual official numbers. I already have those official numbers. Probably. Unless someone changes my mind in this, this particular raffle. But how tall in centimeters do you think Maraltas are going to be? That is the raffle. Go. And then I'll deal with any and all questions about anything to do with Maraltas while that raffle happens. I'm going to try and give that 5-10 minutes. Anything? No, there's people typing. Oh, awesome. Yay! They've just been waiting for me to say, okay, now let me ask any question. I care about things you didn't put on your math PowerPoint. <laughs> type, type, type. Fun fact, in the land of development, I am technically referred to as a mathematician type of developer. But that is not because I'm particularly good at math. It's because engineer-type developers plan everything in advance down to the last iota of what they're going to do and execute once. Musicians plan most of it and execute two or three times. And mathematicians just go. They rebuild things a hundred times over till they get it right. So in fun fact, I'm actually considered a mathematician-type developer. It drives engineers absolutely insane. First question. In the case of option two, would there be a possibility of Moralta X Moralta matching the litter size for standard X Moralta? Since they have the same pass rate, it feels odd to have a smaller litter while matching build and no trade off. The. Can I put option two again? Isn't option two the dire forward one? Uh, yes, option two is the dire forward one. <laughs> that would drag Moralta into always having medium litters, which would undercut the purpose of crossbreeding entirely. Yeah, that's true. But, um, I mean, I can't type today. Uh, I don't think so, but that being said, when we, uh, we'll put a place for, like, you to write out feedback, um, on top of, like, voting in general. Like, I, we'll have a th feedback thread, as we tend to do. We can just do a feedback thread and put the poll at the top of it with a link to all this stuff. Yeah, exactly. That that sounds like a great place. So the feedback thread will likely be up within an hour of the end of this podcast. Because we just have to make the PDF, make the threads, put the polls, put everything together in a way that people can get to it easily. Um, so you can suggest that there. And that's totally fine. As of right now, I'm not so sure because it would... Currently all same build, same build litters have small litter sizes. Except for Dakotas. Dakotas and Tokis are the exception to that. Yeah, but they're... what they are. Yes. So, I don't know. I don't think so is the answer, but I don't know for sure. It's not that I won't entertain it. Anything else? Mm, nothing typing so far. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. No questions on Moraltas. I am. Okay. Is there this excitement? Mm, I think so. That's the problem with PowerPoints. I can't I can't feel the vibe as we go. I cannot feed off of them. <laughs> One of these days we'll figure it out so I can just run the PowerPoint while you get to watch this Twitch stream. Someday. Uh, let me turn my desktop back off and get us back to the main screen over here. Am I okay? Did I say something weird? I have no idea. Yeah, don't worry about me too much. All right. So with that being said, 
let's talk about when Moraltas are going to drop. So we need to make this decision. I'm going to have this... Oh, yeah, I do. Like an energy vampire. I feed off of your hype. Have you not known this yet? <laughs> see? And now I can see the screen and look at the hype that already appeared. Oh. You, you are. I know. <laughs> You're something else. I am what I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Let's talk about when Moraltas are going to come out. This question that I have proposed to you all today is the only question that I need left answered. We need lore. You know that they're going to be shy boys, girls, and pals and all that jazz. They're going to be um, hidden somewhere in the depths of Makarok when they, they drop. That's, that's all lore. We'll likely do a raffle the same way we did previously to get more of that fleshed out. We've done the height. We've done the weight. We've done the gate. We've done the lifespan. We have all of those like little details. The last thing I really needed was a decision made on breeding pass rates. And then from there, um, asking for some of uh, Secret's time to wire them into the breeding roller. And away we go. Like, that's it. So it's just waiting on this decision and a little coding time. And if Secret doesn't have time, I'm actually fairly confident I could do it. Uh, I, I would need to get ramped up on that code again but I could I could I'm not concerned about that it would just take me a day or two longer than it would take her so we're that's why we threw this podcast together I'm pretty sure that by the end of September we'll have done all of the legwork pun intended that we need to do for Meraltas which means an October release is not out of the question so this is caveated on, of course, that we get all of the the work done that we need to do, but we're really close. We got so much done in the initial brainstorm on this. It was so crazy. Things just kept falling into place. In two hours, we had gotten to the point that we were proposing breeding pass rates at each other, and we had decided on slots. We decided on litters. We decided on names for this, and we had artists rolling on art we already needed. Like, it was so just smooth. Um... And this being our last thing where, you know, we're probably going to majority rules um, within reason, within reason. If we get super close between two things, I might make a final decision based on that. But if everybody comes back and goes option two, I'll be like, OK, option two. So that in mind, these are very likely to come in October. That means that the starters will drop. Uh, we don't usually put them in the pools right away, do we? But we have other things going on in October. There's a lot going on in October. So the starters will drop in October. They will not be in the starter slot pools, which is totally normal. We've done that before. It does mean still that you can win slots to them to do breeding with, that we'll be able to give away genos, as we've done before for Haras and Takinos when something goes live for that first month. Also, of course, running on the caveat that we get everything in place. Moraltas will have the ability to rise from the graveyard. That's right. Moraltas will be an option in Gaskin this coming year. If everything is good, granted Gaskins don't come out to the end of the month, so they've got even better chance of being in play where we need them to be at the end of the month. Moraltas have been worked into, thank you, Re, redid all the work to get it in place, Reworked them into the Gaskin Graveyard Logic, put them into the roller, so there is a chance that you can walk away with a Meralta. It's not a high chance, obviously, given that you can't put a Meralta into the graveyard this year. But there is a chance that you can walk away with Meraltas as they rise from the grave. Additionally, there will be two wild Meraltas for Tokoween. There will be a raffle one, I think, mm -hmm. and a standard taming one. Yes, get your taming totems and your tokos in place. You have two weeks. We're going to have Meralta Wilds in October. Ooh, ooh. I'm excited about it. <laughs> I, I still have to get them commissioned, but I believe in our artists in getting them done in time. I thought somebody might have picked one up. I'll double check. They might have. Um, but yes, those are coming. And if that happens... Everything's in place. Moraltas are going to drop with October. I should hold them until January. I don't want to. Yeah. 
whatever. Don't tell them that. <laughs> so that is uh, that's where we're at. Because I want them so badly. You all want them so badly. The hype is here. We got everything done. Let's just do it. Let's have Maralta madness for Tokoween. Because Tokoween is one of my favorite holidays. <laughs> Ooh, I'm super excited about it. Now you got questions. <laughs> oh, now I got questions? All right, bring them on. Well, this one's been there. So, what's Dunn's favorite Maralta main? I thought this was fairly obvious. Razor. <laughs> Razor. She has a grand plan for a Razor Maralta shapeshifter on a dark base. It's a whole thing. She has desperately wanted to make a toko like this. She, like, got one that looks very close, but it's not exactly what she had in mind. And then she was like, well, it's a shapeshifter, and it shapeshifts into something that's closer in mind. But now she's like, no, I'm going to have its main form be the thing I want, and then shapeshift into a glorious monster. And I was like, okay, okay, that's totally fine. So, yeah, Razor. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you need to put in specific builds into the graveyard to have a chance at Moraltas, or are they a possibility no matter what you put in? Wonderful question. I do do believe though Dunn's checking what we officially wrote down in places I mean just double checking Reeves event journal yeah I do believe they live on the side of the the big builds yes, so, so yeah so we have given the build groups out for the others okay they live on the side of the big builds if you put in 10 tokies your chance at a, well, if you put in 10 tokies, you actually lock out the big builds. So you would not be getting a Moralta. Um, and if you lock into the big builds, then you have a shot at getting a Moralta. Of course, it's not super high, but it is there. I suspect maybe like 10 Moralta are going to wander free from the graveyard. I'm not expecting everyone to walk away with a Moralta with the numbers that we've set up. We usually have like 225 um, Gaskin Graveyard because not everybody can find 10 Genos that they want to put in and that's completely fair. And of those, I'm expecting it to be maybe 10 or 15. All right. Uh, any other questions? Uh, what time do we start the raffle? That is a wonderful question. Yes, go pay attention to that. Uh, da, 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 da. We started it at 2.45, so it's been about 15 minutes. All right, uh, go ahead and close up the raffle in two minutes when we hit that 3 o'clock mark. Okay, we've got the three types, so two minutes left on the clock, and then I will do the count. Um, what are we raffling? Um, uh, we could do starter slots. The Moralta starters aren't up yet. Well, obviously. Oh, you just mean starter slots. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I think, uh, I mean, I would do it. I would. I'm such a crazy person, but I don't think that's a good idea because I don't know when they'll be able to use them. Yeah. No, we cannot upload them today and give them slots to the things today. Exactly. That's not really fair because I don't, I don't know what the numbers are. I don't have know when they're going to be in a breeding roller. If something goes absolutely insane and they have to push to November, that's a big deal. How about um, just... I know. Okay, I know what we're going to do. Well, let's do some Abandos. With caveat, they can't be put in the thread this month. Exactly. What? That's the craziest thing. We haven't, we've done that before. We've done that before. I have to create that item. Shit, I have to create that item. You have to go create that item. Fuck. Oh, sorry. Watching the clock carefully. I think we're going to give away two? Three? Do you want me to tell you how many I count in a minute? Yeah. I think it's going to be two or three Abando Har... Har... Not Haras. Moraltas. Wow. Yes. Five? Is that five FFs? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I've lost count. She never noticed, everyone. What, what have I noticed? Nothing. Jill! <laughs> <laughs> you told me to watch the clock. I know. You told me to watch the, the clock. clock. <sighs> you suck. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
All right, then. <clears throat> okay, I need to close this. Don't do mischief while I'm away. That's my job. Is it, though? I feel like it's my job. All right, so Donna is now off counting the raffle. I know. She falls for it every time. I, like, I think she willingly falls for it at this point. I do not. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so we have one more announcement. And this is like a really big announcement. And uh, when I say big, I mean that players don't know what I'm about to say. Admins don't know what I'm about to say. Managers don't know what I'm about to say. There's only four people who actually know what I'm about to say. And of those, three of them don't know I'm about to say it. So it's going to be a whole thing. So next year is Toko's 10th anniversary. We've talked about it already. Um, and of that 10th anniversary, it takes place on June 6th. Well, a couple weeks ago, Dunn and I went to a con where we've been selling our books. And while we were at the con, I talked to a wonderful man named Victor, who runs something called Strategicon that happens three times a year. One of the times it happens during the year is America's Memorial Day weekend, which is the week before our 10th anniversary. And Strategicon has agreed to host TokoCon for a 10th anniversary meetup. That means in Los Angeles... We will have a full proper con. We will have, um, there will be at a hotel. There is so many nerdy things going on. Board games, card games, awesome art, awesome jewelry, soap, candles, um, sword fighting, LARPing, party games, escape rooms. Strategicon has a ton of stuff going on. And Memorial Day weekend is called their Game X Con. They would love to have us, and we're talking between one to two rooms dedicated to Dakotas. We'll be there with all of our stickers. We'll be there with our anthologies. We will be there running panels, and where panels are going to be based on art discussions. I'm going to reach out to artists that tell me they're coming to see if they will run us a panel where maybe they do a discussion on, here's how I do super realistic animals. Here's how I do backgrounds. Here's how I do this. And we will be doing panels on game design. As you know, Dunn and I spend a ton of time in the world of game design. So we will be doing panels on, here's how we do the things that we do in ARPGs. Here's why we make decisions that we make. We will open some of it to the public and some of it will be private for the Toko people. And if you go to, um, so you buy a Strategicon Pass. And Saturday is likely going to be our big day of the meetup. We will have a room that we can all go into. We can say hi. We're all nerds in a wonderfully safe and public environment uh, with an awesome con that wants us to be there to celebrate our 10th anniversary. So Togo Con is going to happen. It's going to happen at Strategicon. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited about it. There's so much to plan. How could you announce it? <laughs> yes. I know they need to know. I know. Well, everyone needs to know so that they can make arrangements to a to buy tickets and go to that con um on top of our normal uh on top of your normal pass well this is very in the air right now so you'll buy your normal pass knowing that you just need a saturday pass if you want to come to everything tokos it, but if you're flying in from somewhere i highly suggest going to the entire con there is a lot of fun that happens at this one i have been twice now i love it it's not as insane as like a San Diego or a Phoenix Comic Con. It's not 10,000 people. It's like 2,000 people. So it feels like there's people here, but it is not anxiety inducing at all. Um, and they're all nerds who are all here to do all the same nerdy stuff that you are. Don't tell me you're not nerds. You play an art role playing game with wolf bear dogs. I'm not going to believe you. That being said, if you buy your Saturday pass, we're going to do an extra little, like, you can buy a Togo VIP experience and we'll have a goodie bag with shirts and other things in there for you. More details on that to come. Obviously, I will announce an agenda and a schedule as soon as I have it. Um, I will be there. And as of right now, the other group owners, Cray and Daff, are tentative yeses on being there as well, which means you're going to have the full three of us who are in charge of everything, there and doing things all day. And we want and welcome everyone who wants to come to come. 
It'll be tons of fun. Uh, and any way we can facilitate it, we will. And of course, we will be doing our 10th anniversary pins. If timing comes together in the timeline I have, we would also have those pins there. Which means no shipping for you. <laughs> okay, so TokoCon 10th anniversary meetup. Woo! I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm, I'm containing my excitement. I'm so excited about it. How'd that raffle go? I was waiting for you to tell me how many. There's 52 people. Three. Do three. Okay, so I need... They're asking, uh, they're talking about, because she's comparing Kat's Ben to Orcon and stuff before, so. Oh, okay. But yeah, Kat is completely correct. I am an anxiety bomb in a con situation, and I have set up, we've set up at two this year, and it's been just chill, good vibes. Yeah. No anxiety attacks from the sheer number of people. Yeah, it's not. There, there's plenty of space to roam around. It's a nice hotel. Every food we've had there, not necessarily at the con, but like every food that we've had um, in that little LA area has been glorious, absolutely glorious. So, um, curry burgers. Oh, those curry burgers. They were so good. <laughs> um, I found something on Uber Eats and I was like, it's called Humble Potato. Okay, I'm going to open it. And I'm like, what are these names? I don't understand. Why does this say Hambaga? And then I showed it at Dunn, and Dunn goes, well, because they're Japanese hamburgers with curry on them. And I was like, sold. Let's do this. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So I can count. But keep in mind, everybody, as you're talking about being unsure about that travel, if more, more and more people are coming, doing things like meeting up in the airport and ride sharing to the hotel so you're not on your own is very viable. And we're all in Toko Discord. We can facilitate and plan that y'all have toko shirts you'll be able to find each other half of you are going to bring your eye pack with you like you'll be findable there there's ways to make this work to i don't want to say combat that's not fair but to work within your anxiety to get you to this con where you will have fun done's almost done counting dun 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 Only half, because I don't think the other half have them. All right, do you just want me to go type in the announcements or tell you who it is? Tell me who it is, and then you can type in the announcements. Okay, so for a Bando Moraltas, which you cannot put in until Moraltas have been released and officially announced in the news, will be Ali, Kep, and Noble Trader. Did I say that correctly? Yes. Okay, good, good, good. Ooh. I hope you're as excited as I am about all of this. How did oh, this took an hour and a half? Thank actually, I think I got real close to how long I thought this was going to take. <laughs> Getting better at the estimates. I don't know exactly what we're gonna have just yet. It would be nice to have a, a live stream for people who are willing to be in front of a live stream, but we'll we'll do what we can. Obviously, we know not everybody can go. We're not expecting the thousands of toko players out there to descend on los angeles because there's more of us than there are people who go to this con they wouldn't know what to do uh, <laughs> but when we're there we will try and include people who can't be there in the fun of what's going on because not every admin's going to make it so we'll try and make some fun in discord while we're there too Woo. okay okay cool 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 Cool, cool, cool. I think that's everything that I had. Um, I only like semi apologize to admins and managers and the other people in charge. Oh dear, what? Except you said there are more Tokos players than there's people in Los Angeles. No, people at Strategicon. People at Strategicon. Jeez. Ooh. Yeah, no, that, that would be silly. Um, That'd be terrifying. That would be terrifying. Ooh. Surprise, admins. Surprise. That's why me and Jill took all the Toko stuff that weekend. Mm -hmm. To make this pitch. <laughs> to make this pitch to the people who run Strategicon who were very interested in working with us. So at this point, we'll be planning it up over the next like eight months. That will be Memorial Day weekend in May. I believe that's the last weekend in May. Um, the con goes 
Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Friday is a very light day. Monday is a fairly light day. Yeah. Friday and Monday are super light. We're going to aim for the majority of our stuff to take place on Saturday. Of course, those plans may change as we talk to the uh, coordinators of Strategicon who are graciously going to host us. Um, And whatever, like, works really well for them, we're going to try and accommodate it because... I mean, we're, we're going to see. We're going to see. They need content. We want to be there. Let's let's make this happen. And for our anxiety players out there, I have been told that GameX tends to be their lightest con of the year. So it is the one with the least amount of attendance, which means it can be even more Toko-focused. Everyone who went through that merch room stopped to look at our stickers. So many people walked away with a sticker. So many non-Toko people were like, I pack is glorious goodbye yeah we, so many ipac stickers got taken um borga was really popular nobody likes sivo i don't understand why though i love sivo um and maybe that's just a toko sense of humor <laughs> <laughs> we didn't find the cthulhu players that's what happened yeah we never find the call of cthulhu players <laughs> um and of course if you're coming to strategicon and you're like hey what about like i want to set up like an art table Feel free to reach out to me. I'll get you connected with those people. Like, well, we're all for artists, writers, and anyone getting together and, and doing stuff. Um, and speaking of that as, like, a last note, then, I will reach out to Tina and Cray and see if they will be posting anthology stuff so you can watch on their, like, Instas or TikToks or whatever they post on um, and round up those links for everybody if they're going to be. To make it easy so you can find them. We'll do a link drop. We'll do a link drop. Exactly. Daily Bark probably. Yep. We'll do it in Daily Bark when we get there. So. <laughs> <laughs> there was some confusion about LA versus Vegas. And Cray had said it's LA because Luna is just running it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah. Basically. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Okay. Um, that's it. Honestly, that's everything I've got. I, I don't know if I can even top that spoiler. Like, really? Wh- what can I do beyond telling you no, there's a con? <laughs> and the manager didn't even know what was going to happen until it did. Uh, here's hope. Given that Cray and Daff are still there and I don't have a thousand DMs going on, I guess they're not too mad about me telling people. Wait, did you not tell them? No. You don't tell me. That's normal. Well, you didn't hear me when I said there's only four people know about this happening and only one of them... Three of them don't know I'm about to say this. I was counting raffle entries. <laughs> I know. Can somebody else do this job when we're doing this? <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um, last call for questions. And then I'm going to... Uh... Hmm? Ah. Questions? Last call for questions. Do, 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 do. Can you go check the thread? I'm checking. Uh, did we mention which... Out- at the, the, the. Did we mention which activities Maraltas will specialize in? Which will be small game prey. Yes. Or cleverness. Wait, that, that's the wrong thing. Whatever. Green heart for you, Allie. Sorry. Cool, cool, cool. So, yes, they will be doing um, small prey just like the Tokis. Okay. Uh, anything else? No, don't see anybody typing. Um, Daff and Cray... Uh, Oh, wait. Called you out right there. That's all. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. I don't expect anything different from Jill. Yeah, they're fair. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I don't spend their money without asking them at least. Impressed. Jill. What? You went to look at questions. Yeah. Questions crested. The words are close enough. It's not fair. <laughs> I know it's not. My computer's all the way over here and controls everything. Stop looking at things. You wouldn't be able to. Mm. All right, everybody. Lots of love from Jill and Dunn. We will see you on our next podcast. I don't know what it'll be about. I don't know when it'll be. You'll know as soon as I know. And, uh, bye. <laughs>